G'day guys, Tom here from Different Drop. We've got a very special guest today, uh, all the way from McLaren Vale, Steve Panel. Thanks for joining us, mate. No problems at all. Uh, very excited to have Steve here. Um, Steve's wine, so the SC Pinnell label. Um, favorite, one of our favorite Australian producers, mate, and uh, doing some incredibly exciting things with, with alternative varieties and, and techniques and all kinds of mucking around, as you put it. So, <laughs> mate, just in a nutshell, for those that don't know um, your wines that well, I, I guess, what's the SC panel label about and, and what are you most excited about with the wines? So, I, I, I'm really interested in making, I know it sounds ridiculously obvious, wine that I like yeah. and, and want to drink. Um, I'm interested in, I think, I'm nearly 50, and so interested in what we're going to be doing in 30 or 40 or 50 years, and yeah. I don't know whether that's the same thing that we're doing now. I think we've been obsessed with being France, the whole of Australia, and where I live is a very Mediterranean place in McLaren Vale. So my focus is moving away from France, probably to Sicily, Sardinia, Greece, Portugal, Spain, all those sorts of places. Um, so it's wines that you can drink. I know that yep. sounds obvious as well, but wine's been going through a, a, a period of admiration rather than drinkability. And so I think we need to start make wine make wine that sort of responds to our climate, our way of life, our food, and we live in a hot climate and we live in a Mediterranean climate. So it's it's those sort of things. But then the other side is, I think, wine, it's a unique thing that separates it from other things. Is that it can speak of a place. Yep. And so I want my wines to speak of where they come from. That's the only unique element you have in your wine. So I'm protecting that character. Um, I don't want obvious oak in these wines because I don't grow trees, I grow grapes. And so I'd like my wine to taste like grapes. Would you move into growing trees? <laughs> no, I think I've got enough on my plate <laughs> as it sits. But no, I mean, it's just one day it sits. That's what came to me. I yeah. I'm grow grapes. I don't yeah. grow oak trees. And so wine for me is about grapes and about place. When you said before that you, you make wines that you'd like to drink, do you think, do you think there has been a, a big case in Australian wine of, of people making wines for shows or, or for certain categories rather than going quality and, yeah. and diversity first? We've been selling wine based on its admiration, yeah. how powerful it is, how big it is, how many points you can get, what price it is. But, you know, for me, there's wines in the world like uh, the best examples I've got are Chianti Classico and Cote de Rhone. They're wines that respond to a place and they respond to a way that people live and the things they do. And for us... It's a journey to create a food and a wine culture that matches. And the best way I can draw that is a parallel between art. It took us almost 120 to 130 years of just painting what we see before we actually could paint what mm. we saw. So how long is it going to take us before we make wine and food that suits who we are? And, and these cultures and food culture is a very progressive thing. And I always think, you know, pasta and rice are not indigenous to Italy. Chile is not indigenous to Thailand. So there's not this stagnant, way of looking at the world that that we have currently with things. It's a much more progressive, much more fusion driven melting pot of ideas yep. and that's that's the way I want to take my wines. Yeah. So guys, if, uh, when you're looking at uh, Steve's range, you've got things like Tempranillo, uh, Tariga Nacional, uh, yep. Titicao, yep. Um, all sorts of uh, Nebbiolo, Grenache, um, obviously white varieties like Caverns Tremonor yep. and Pinot Grigio and Riesling. So all sorts of things as well as uh, mainstream varieties. With the mainstream varieties like Shiraz mm -hmm. and, and Grenache and, and Sauvignon Blanc, are you yep. trying to make them in a in a more sort of, I guess, old world style? Or Well, there's a funny thing with um, winemakers in general and popularity, and you see it once the consumers take on something that's popular, and the Sauvignon yep. Blanc is the greatest example, that everyone goes, oh, I don't like that. It's like it's almost anti-wine, and I don't like that. And I remember the early days of judging wine shows with Sauvignon Blanc where people wouldn't give them medals or wouldn't give them trophies, and consumers wanted that. So... I think Sauvignon Blanc's been a hugely important variety for people because the biggest thing that people have a problem with wine is they look at me and go, oh, that smells like berries and this, and they go, what, they put berries in it or what the hell's going on? Getting a wine where people can identify a character, and yeah. with Sauvignon Blanc, that's so easy to do. Yeah, exactly. You can see, although everybody says gooseberry, but I don't think how many people have actually eaten a gooseberry in their life in Australia would be a limited <laughs> number, but that asparagus, passion fruit, tropical thing, yeah. people go, oh, I get what yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Recognize. And then from that point forward, it becomes important. So wines like that, you know, it's the same. It's happening now to Moscato or Pinot Grigio. Oh, Pinot Grigio, that's water. And it's like, well, people drink it and they use it. So mm. I think stepping it's stone, right? Correct. So making good ones that people can go, I like that, is where my territory sits. I mean, I'm probably, I take some old world styles, I suppose, in, in terms of restraint. Yep. But I think I've got to make wines that express Australia. And there's, a, there's an issue, I suppose, with Pinot Grigio and Gris, is it this, is it that? In my head, I call it Pinot G, and it's just Australian yeah. Pinot G, yeah, and, yeah, that's where like it. It, and that's yeah. where it sits. So, look, um, yeah, there's a, there are, 
I try to make the best one I can from the vineyard. And sometimes winemakers, you know, how people say dogs are like their owners, wines are like their winemakers. Yep. You sort of so the ability to step back and let the vineyard be and not be all like me is a is a constant battle to sort of let the vineyard be. Yep. And somebody told me in my early days in France, an old winemaker there said, most of the time it's harder to do nothing as a winemaker than it is to do something. And yep. I always keep that in my head. Am I Absolutely. going to get in the way? What do I need to do? And, and that's what I've learned over time, when to interject and when to step back. Unreal. And guys, uh, lastly, um, exciting news from, for Steve in the last uh, <laughs> couple of months, I guess, is um, got a new cellar door uh, yep. in McLaren Vale. So if you're in the region, make sure you, uh, you yes. Google SC Pinnell and pop in. Yep. Uh, and he'll put on a show. <laughs> We've like, got everything on pour. Yeah. I think we're the, the widest poured cellar door in McLaren Vale. So we've got everything. <laughs> so people make the effort to come and see me. There's our wines to try. Oh, right. so it's Guys, good. some of the best best wines in the country, like hands down, Nebbiolo, Grenache, Shiraz, everything Steve does is, is up there with some <laughs> of the best around. So an amazing value for money too. So I appreciate everything. Keep it up. And thanks for coming in and, and uh, no we'll be in touch. Take care. Cheers.